It's My like t-shirt scum. says it all. Oh no. Hi, I'm Re. Welcome back to my channel. Mummy of Four does Disney. Today we are heading to Animal Kingdom for the next day on our Walt Disney World trip. Now the weather isn't amazing today. It has been raining. There was actually a hurricane warning earlier, um, but it, the weather forecast did say it's going to stop raining by 11. It is just gone 11 and it has stopped raining. So fingers crossed that is correct. We have had a really like l chilled, lazy morning. We've been eating breakfast in the room. We're staying in the Art of Animation and just to save a few pounds really and to give us the option of, of chillaxing. I did bring loads of cereal bars and things. So everyone's showered and sorted. We're just about to head over to the Landscape of Flavors, which is a restaurant here in the Art of Animation. And we're gonna eat something before we head off to Animal Kingdom so we know we don't have to like look for food as soon as we get there. And then we're gonna go on some rides and then tonight we're booked into Tusker's which is character dining which is really, really exciting. Right, let's show you what we're all wearing and then we can head off. I'm sporting some animal print ears. I've got a Hakuna Matata t-shirt and an animal print skater skirt. We've been doing a lot of Disney bounding this trip, but if you watch my outfit planning video, you'll know that Animal Kingdom's the one I struggled most with for Disney bounds. So the girls are not wearing Animal Kingdom specific outfits, but they have these Merida dresses. I didn't know which park to use them for, so Animal Kingdom's as good as any, but there is a bear in Brave, and well, a bear is an animal. Well, her mum so, turns into a bear. Yeah, so there's my very loose connection for that one. William has just got, um, a hey t-shirt <laughs> and um, some Mickey ears from the Mickey ear hat that came in our yeah, gift basket on the first day we arrived. I like them so much. I'm Daddy of four, come into the light, dear. Is Woo! surrounded by idiots. My like t-shirt says it all. Yeah. <laughs> Turn around and show you over in your bag. And we also have plaques. You also have plaids. Um, today, Zara has chosen the All Over Princesses bag. Again, I don't actually have an Animal Kingdom specific bag, so I'm just taking this beautiful Cinderella Castle bag because it just reminds me of the 50s and the colours and things. Bells. Bell. <laughs> the bell bag. The bell bag again. She loves bell, don't you, darling? Yeah. And I'm so, also going to have it tomorrow. Of course, because tomorrow we're going to the Magic Kingdom and eating in. Be, um, be our guest, and it's guest. bell day tomorrow. It's bell day. I just want to mention briefly, because I have had um, questions and things over on Instagram um, about the COVID test. As it stands at the moment, and please, please check before you travel because things are changing so frequently. Unvaccinated travellers, so therefore the under 18s in our party, had to do a COVID test between days three and five of arriving in the States. So we've done all of those. Everyone is negative, which is fine. Um, funnily enough, my eldest has had both jabs, but he only had the last one just before we left, so he isn't considered fully vaccinated until 14 days have elapsed after he's had his jab. So just as a little aside, uh, we've done those. I've just taken the photos because we don't have to upload them anywhere as such. You just have to fill in a form to say that you promise you will do them um, before you enter the States and that you promise you will do them when you get here. Um, so I've just taken photos of them next to the children's yeah. passports just in case anyone asks. Okay, okay, Daddy for it's calling us. It's time to go. I really fancy going to Disney Springs later. So I think what I'd like to do as we've left earlier is to get into Animal Kingdom, do some rides, do Tuskers, which we've got the character dining reserved, and then maybe jump on the bus to Disney Springs. From what I can gather, there isn't transport between the parks and Disney Springs, but there is transport between the resorts and Disney Springs, so therefore there is a bus from Animal Kingdom to Disney Springs because there's also a resort at Animal Kingdom. Do you follow me there? <laughs> the other thing it's well worth mentioning is it is definitely worth bringing a reusable water bottle with you because there are places in the parks and the resorts where you can fill up with water for free. There is an option to buy, I think it's just shy of $20, like 19 dollars 19 something like that. You can buy a Disney mug and you can refill that with like soda fountain, you know, Coke, Diet Coke, that kind of thing. Unlimited after that at the resorts, but not the parks. Um, but to be honest, we're just doing the water thing. Um, if you follow me on my main channel, you know I drink those birth drink sachets. So I just am putting those into my water bottle um, to give my head a caffeine.
I got some of Walt's favourite chilli in like a bread bowl. Oh nice. I've just popped back over to the room to get some jackets and things because the weather's not looking amazing. It's not boiling um, and other days it's definitely been less breezy. Um, we've got um, a DAS reservation pre-booked for Dinosaur. The Dinosaur is currently down, so we're going to go and ask them what to do about that. Um, if you haven't seen the vlogs before, DAS is the Disability Access System or Service, I'm not sure which one it stands for. And it holds your place in the queue for people that are unable to queue for whatever reasons. In our case, we've got autism in the family. We need to go and figure that out. Then later on, we've got a DAS reservation for Flight of Passage which is very exciting, although Zara won't be tall enough to go on that. So I'll just take the others on and leave her with my husband. The dinosaur ride or towards it but that whole area is closed so they've sent us back to guest relations the nearest of which is in discovery island so the moral of the story is if you've got an issue with das don't go to the ride go and look for guest relations instead because that's where they'll end up sending you okay so a bit of a round around circle here guest service has said that because it was an advanced selection it can't be changed so lesson learned there as well that advanced selections can't be changed, same day selections could be changed if the ride is down. So now we know. So we're going to go on, it's tough to be a bug while we wait for flight of passage because apparently there's only a five minute wait on that anyway, so let's go. film in there. Look, it's one of the very few rides actually that specifies in Disney, um, or attractions I should say, that you're not allowed to film at all. In fact, some of them say they actively encourage it. Anyway, it was a 4D show, we needed the 3D glasses. So to be honest, when you try and film those things, they never come out very well anyway. It was quite dark and scary, it was really good, but lots of, you know, things flying in your face and being squirted at you. Funny smells squirted at you the seat jiggling so a really great 4d experience it was very clever but zara wasn't very impressed were you no so i said i just said to zara just look take your 3d glasses off and then nothing will fly in your face and she just sort of hid under my armpits a little bit um so if you've got very little ones maybe think about it Getting into Flight of Passage, Zara is not tall enough for this one, she's, she's staying off. She's not very impressed <laughs> that we're splitting up, but the others really, really wanted to do it. it William says it's said to be a teen tween favourite. Yeah. Here we go first, kids. Apparently it's like a simulator, and we do need 3D glasses. So I perhaps try and film a little bit of it, but I'm not sure how well it will come out, because generally 
like I said, the ones with 3D, if you need 3D glasses, they don't come out too well on camera, but we'll see what we can do. Welcome to the Abbey Park program. Soon, you're gonna have a chance to undertake an amazing Navi rite of passage, riding on the back of a banshee by being genetically matched and linked to an avatar. Using avatars to fly this way was all figured out by my boss, Dr. Jackie Ogden. She leads her science team, which is part of the Pandora Conservation Initiative, and we're here in the Valley of Moara studying banshees and their environment. Over a generation ago, this enormous company called the RDA created a lot of damage to the area through their bad mining practices and conflicts with the Navi. Just like on Earth, it can take decades for ecosystems to recover. One way to understand what's going on with an ecosystem is to study what are called keystone species. These are animals like tigers, jaguars, seals. The banshee is one of these important animals. Dr. Ogden is the foremost expert on studying the Ikran and has spent years researching them. Unfortunately, banshees live high in rookeries and humans can't get anywhere near them without <laughs> becoming their lunch. But the Navi and avatars can. Okay, to get you flying on a banshee, we need to find each of you an avatar. Um, let's uh, prep the genetic sampling. I'm on it. Okay, um, first we need to find the compatible match of your genetic material with the genetic material of one of the avatar bodies that we already have. Once we do that, you'll be able to link to that avatar and uh, fly. <laughs> Help us out and move around a bit. Almost. Yes, got him. Now, let's find you your avatar matches. All right, yeah, you've all been matched with avatars. No, it's uh, ooh, yeah. looks like they're ready for you in the next room. Uh, when the door opens, please go inside, all the way in, and stand over the same number that you're standing over now. Whatever you want. And, uh, and I'll see you in there. I'm a good one. <laughs> oh, please move all the way inside. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm Welcome in, friends. Thank you. Of course. Great, you've all made it. Uh, it's important that you can all see me, so move a little if you can't. Before we send you to the link chamber, let's watch this piece by Dr. Ogden, who runs the program. Welcome, everyone. I'm Dr. Jackie Ogden from the Pandora Conservation Initiative. You're about to experience a ceremony that's very special to the Navi flying on the back of an Ikran, or as we call it, a banshee. To the Navi, connecting to an Ikran and flying on its back is an incredibly important rite of passage they call Ikni Maya. With permission from the Navi and in partnership with Alpha Centauri Expeditions, we can now bring this amazing experience to you. The way you'll be able to fly is by linking to an avatar that's already on the back of an Ikran. Let's see how this works. We establish a link using powerful psionic amplification equipment. A human driver is connected to an avatar, which could be physically hundreds of kilometers away. When you follow our technician into the link chamber, you'll see a series of 16 link chairs. Please go to the number that matches the number you're standing on now. First, stow your gear in the storage containers on the back wall. This should include all bags, cameras, and other items, including cell phones. It's important to push them all the way into the bin. Then get onto the chair as you would a bike. Straddle the seat, step forward, and sit down. Slide your hips forward until you are against the chest pad, and then move your feet all the way forward. Wait until you're seated before you put on your flight visors. Hold onto the hand grips as shown. It's important to hold onto the hand grips at all times. After you're seated, back and leg restraints will be firmly engaged. For your safety, throughout this entire experience, always remain seated and supervise your children. Once the link takes place, you'll be connected to your avatar and sitting on the back of an Ikron. It'll feel like you're really there. Moments later, you'll begin your flight. 
a Navi guide will lead you out. You'll experience the breathtaking beauty of Pandora, but you might also face some of its greatest challenges. Some of this flight might be intense, but trust your guide and be brave. As the Navi say during this important rite of passage, Sivak Hope, rise to the challenge. Good luck. All right, you ready? Yeah, I've been Let's get you to the lake chamber. Like a boss guest. Attention drivers, stow your gear on the back wall and then get onto the link chair the way we showed you in the video. Then put on your flight visors. For your safety, throughout this entire experience, remain seated. Lean forward, holding onto the hand grips, and supervise your children.
Welcome back. Please step off the link chair, gather your belongings, and exit the link chamber. Wow, what do you think of that, guys? Was that good? Did you enjoy that? Oh, yeah, it was fun. I told you it had a What, what? Attention drivers. Wow, so that? The that was immense. Yeah. Immense? Wow, well, that was intense, wasn't it? Yeah. So you weren't I quite sure, like but then you did like it, didn't you? Mwah. That was, I don't think you could possibly understand from just watching a video how intense that was. So you're on the bike thing, which was kind of jiggling at you and sort of vibrating and pressing on things. So basically it was mimicking and making you really feel like you were riding the thing because you could feel the muscles moving, there was wind in your face. You feel it like breathing. You could feel it breathing you and, feel, and the water was, spraying in your face when you go near the yeah, water. Yeah, it was the, just and the really good. Is incredible. There's like a sunset. William, what do you think? Well, I think I think it's second best ride out of all of the rides we've done. In out of all of Disney World so far. Okay, well, yeah. what's number one? Millennium Falcon. Not right. Not resistance. No, because no, you got to push buttons. Uh, uh, I think, the real it, thing. I think it's all the way up to the Millennium Falcon. Well, okay. Avatar was probably more immersive their resistance though. So. It did have a lot more kind was, of wind in your face and yeah. it was very, because as they linked to the Avatar, it was like uh, just lots of like multi-sensory stuff. Mm. Bella, which is your favourite ride so far then? Uh, of all of Disney World? Mean? In all of Disney World? Have you got a favourite? No. A running favourite? No. Right, well but should we go? I do have a few. A few? Okay, what are they? Uh, this one. This one is, oh this one makes a top few. Frozen. Yeah. And Ariel and... Yeah. Uh, yeah, so should we go into the into the avatar shop and then we'll go out and find Daddy and Zara. Cool too. Whew, my hair's a bit windswept from all the um, flying on the banshee, is that what they call it? I've had a text from my husband saying we are in Africa so we're heading there which works out actually because we are going on Kilimanjaro safaris next. It's also got super windy and my high-sided ears keep blowing off. No way! Where did you see them? Where, where, where did you see them? Did Daddy film it? Yeah, I oh. think so. I, I think hope so. so. Check. Daddy, did you film it? The, um, the river parade thingy. Oh. Did you film Mickey and Minnie? Oh, I forgot. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Here, friends, we want to make sure we come back with everyone we started with. So, again, stay seated, make sure you're holding on tight to any loose items you brought. 
That includes cameras and cell phones if you plan on taking pictures. And if you guys want to take a look up above your heads on the roof of the truck, no, you're going to find the animals. That'll help you identify the animals along the way. All right, but well, welcome to our first stop, the Little Itari Forest. Animals that live here tend to be a little more shy, but over on our right, I actually see our first animal coming up here. It looks like the Okapi. It's got those beautiful white stripes on its legs. Okapis are, in fact, relatives of giraffes. Hopefully we'll see some of their cousins here in just a little bit. We'll keep going for now. We're going to head down towards this watering hole, see who's down here. Always a good meeting place for animals here in the forest. Unfortunately, forest animals, though, are facing a lot of threats, my friends. Habitat loss, for one, is we cut down trees, so really important. We do try to recycle as much as we can to help them out. Now, coming up on your right, though, you're going to see some saddle belt store, which are these pair of black and white birds up here sitting on the hill. They typically make for life, so you almost always find them in pairs. And they have very large wingspans. It can get up to about nine feet. It's about the same width as the canopy up above our heads. Also to your right, orange antelope way up at the top there. Those are bongos. Very shy in the wild. Over the years, they've actually gotten the nickname the ghost of the forest. And then some greater kudu, which are these lighter tan ones here too. I think that's it for the forest, so we're going to go ahead and get out of here for now. We're off to a good start, but we're going to keep moving. Which is always a good spot to find some hippos, so you're just going to want to keep your eyes on the water. I usually look for a set of eyes or nostrils. See, oh, and I do see a hippo. It's actually up on the bank, though. If you guys look behind us to the right, back in the corner there, just coming down from that hill, you'll see that hippo back there. Coming down towards the water. That's kind of rare during the daytime to see hippos out of the water. A lot of times they'll hang out towards the bottom actually so they can stay out of the hot sun. And they're not the best of swimmers. They prefer to walk or sometimes even run along the bottom of the river instead. Usually when they do come up on the banks that means they're looking for food. Also to your left you're going to be coming up on these pink back pelicans which are these white gray birds over here. Pretty cool how their uh, color actually appears right around mating season. So their backs will flush pink, which helps them show off for each other. And once they've attracted that bait, they'll go back and lay their eggs on that island back there. They're colonial nesters. Down to your left, we got some Nile crocodiles. Ooh. Can you see those? They average 16 feet. They can go up to about see the 500 pounds. That? They also have really powerful jaws that they force. They do look tired. That's around 2,000 pounds of pressure per square inch. So they can pretty much chop through anything. All right, let's see who's out on the savanna today, though. Good. And what you're going to notice is that there's a lot of open space out here. There's not too many places for animals to hide, so camouflage doesn't really work as well out here. These animals have to rely on each other for safety. They'll stay together. There's a couple animals coming up here, the first of which is these Hartman's Mountain Zebra. Come on over yeah. species. Now these guys, if you look at their stomachs closely, they don't have any black under there. It's an easy way to tell them apart. All their stripe patterns are, of course, unique, just like us in our fingerprints. You also might see some Ancoli cattle coming up here. What did you say? Which are those brown ones out to right with the big horns. You'll usually find them in Oh, you yeah. Africa. On to your left, we also have some sable antelope, which are the brown ones with the curved horns. Might have seen them on some of the signs around the village. And then the gray ones, these are wildebeest. You probably recognize them. In fact, every year, over one and a half million wildebeest cross Africa. And again, that's usually during those dry seasons. But again, they do need to stay together for safety because the more eyes they have out here, the better chance they'll see those predators come in and they can warn each other to get away. I think that we are getting pretty close now. There's a watering hole up here somewhere. I know we're getting close to elephant country as well, so we'll keep our eyes open. Oh! oh there we go. <laughs> okay, we're running down the hill. I was wondering where they are. Where they were, I should say. There they go. Yeah, these guys are amazing, though. In addition to having their long necks, they also, just like Okafis, do have very long tongues, which allow them to reach up and grab the leaves They're on the cool, little branches of the trees. 
Yeah. As a trim above, that helps create what the canopy you, up What do you think of giraffes? I think they're yeah, yeah. one to go. Well, these days, yeah. though, they don't really sleep that Which much. Which is your favorite animal? Giraffes only get about 30 uh, minutes of sleep in a day. My favorite animal. Uh, it's not even all at once, either. These guys have perfected power napping for a couple minutes here and there at a time. Yeah. Like ducks. Do you? Um, like, okay, so we're heading into elephant country now, friends. If you look to your right, you're going to see this elephant next to the water here. Oh, look at the elephant. They get up to about 13,000 pounds fully grown. We'll pause right in the middle. That's your lift, though. You can look along the back wall there past the trees. You also see a family of monkeys walking up this way. These are called mandrels. There's a couple of younger ones, too. Yeah, they're super cute. They are so much fun mandrels. They have little pouches in their cheeks, which they're able to store food in and keep as a snack for later. It's like having built-in Tupperware. Now back to elephants, though. If you guys have ever wondered how to tell the difference between Asian and African elephants, the key lies in their ears. So African elephants' ears are much larger. They actually use them to cool themselves off. They're basically like having two giant fans on the sides of their heads. Whereas Asian elephants have much smaller ears and are just smaller in general. Real, they are real. What's real, baby? Oh, the animals. They are, yes, yeah, so they are real. real. <laughs> a lot of minerals, a lot of nutrients in it. Only one real in fact, if you guys look oh, up here on the right, okay. you'll start to see some tusk marks there in the clay from where the elephants I have dug it out before. Bunny. So I've heard it's definitely been through here recently. I see. I know bunnies are quite they are. Now here at Disney, of course, we do a lot of conservation work with our animals as well. Uh, one of the main things here especially is research, because the more we study these animals, the more we can help their wildlife counterparts. And one of the things we've learned over the last couple of years is that elephants are actually afraid of bees. Which kind of surprises us, you know, it's a big animal, be scared of something so tiny. But they really don't like them, and that actually worked out in our favor. There was a growing problem of elephants wandering into farm areas in Africa and unfortunately destroying a lot of crops that farmers needed. So, to keep them away, but also keep them safe, help protect those crops, we created these really cool beehive fences. We just put them up around the farms, and elephants hear that buzzing and know to stay away. So, it protects all of those things. Diet, they have lots and lots of shrimp, which over time changes their feathers. So if not, they would mostly be kind of a grayish black color. You can even see some younger ones that haven't turned pink yet. If you look over here on the left, they're down kind of at the edge of the island here in the water. We still got a little ways to go. Now my favorite thing about them though is definitely their grouping name. Group of flamingos. If you didn't know, it's actually called the flamboyants. If you look to your left up on the hill, there's a cheetah right below those trees over there. That's the fastest land mammal in the world. Can you see? Up there. Now these guys can actually run 60 miles an hour. Oh my gosh, the king of the savannah, my friends. Look on your left, there's a couple of lions sitting right up here at the front. Oh, look, it's Simba. Simba? Ooh, on your left though, if you guys look up on the hill, there's Pumbaa back there. That's a warthog. Oh. <laughs> A couple of them actually, they're really fun. Right up there, there's even that guy standing on the roof. What you doing up there, bud? <laughs> yeah, they're having a good time. They love to climb, they love to hurt buddy each other. Two friends, if you guys haven't checked them out yet, they're really awesome because they would really finish it. We saw lots of them. So, we had such a you know, limited time here at Safari's. Oh, my ears, but so so if you guys would like to head over, uh, Girl of Falls isn't too far. It's just up no, to the right. No, no, big animals. Off. That we were and at, uh, Girl of Falls not Exploration Trail not only has like gorillas, but monkeys. <laughs> Safari was amazing. Felt very authentic. The animals all looked like they had, they had loads of space. The tour guide was really entertaining, gave loads of really good facts as well. Bit of a bumpy ride, but loads and loads of fun. We were on it for quite a while. Oh, Wendy, take it off. <laughs> but highly recommended. It's a definite must do if you come into Animal Kingdom. So we're now heading down to the Navi River journey, which will be in the next episode of this vlog series, which should be on screen now. So you can click over and watch that. Make sure you are subscribed with bell notifications on so you do not miss any episodes in this Disney World vlog series. Thanks for watching. See you guys soon. Bye.